Welcome back to Echo Ridge and another episode here in our Germanic campaign. Our settler is making their way up to this island here. We did just colonize Frankfurt and to my satisfaction we're not having any loyalty issues there. Partly because we have a governor, but partly because these two cities are also pushing enough influence there. I'm still bitter about us declaring peace with Poland. I'm only three turns away from being able to get crossbow men with have a range strength of 40. I just have a feeling that I could have peppered down Poland's capital pretty quickly. Now we'd have to wait eight, nine more turns before our peace accords would go out before we'd be able to declare war again. Not that I'm saying that's what we need to do, I'm just saying it was an option. But I do think we have some economic things to catch up on. For instance, I want to be able to get into our Hansas, really start churning that industrial machine that Germany is known for, and that way we can start building a massive, massive navy. While we don't necessarily own our whole island, considering we're going to have two forward operating bases here, I think it's going to put us in a good position for some later game assaults on the rest of the sea. Speaking of which, our little Voyager galley here has been doing a great job with exploration. Somehow we got the inspiration for recorded history. Not quite sure how we did that one, so I'm gonna go check it out. Oh, it's because we finished two campus districts. Very nice. Speaking of which, I'm about ready for Berlin to start theirs as well. But they only have a population of four, and I think I want their first district to be a harbor. Eh, never mind. We'll buy it. It's only 85. And then we'll plop down the campus. It's 15 turns. Here it is in our capital. We are ready to produce a library or a water mill. I don't think we need the water mill. And we got six food and we're growing decent. We have 13 house. I do want to start playing catch up on the science game, especially being able to get some of those great sciences points. So I think what we're going to do is go library into water mill. Our quadrium is finally complete. So we're going to have it do some local patrols around the area. We're not going to have it do any of the long-range scouting like this galley here and this galley up here because i always want to have a little bit of naval defense especially considering we're heading up over turn 113. you never know when somebody's gonna get frosty just like this oh uh, what are you doing we have a trebuchet a catapult and a spearman oh that doesn't look good hopefully we can wrap all the way back around let's go talk to maori what do you think you're doing buddy i'd love to just be able to declare the war flat on them we have about an equal military strength, and then this just one strike right here in the middle of the ocean would definitely hurt some of these units. They also have a galley here. Oh, Coupe's trying to get spicy. We are done trying to build the commercial hub. We need to go ancient walls immediately. Ancient walls in our capital. We will cancel the campus here and go straight for another quadrim, and then we're going to bring some of our archers down. It's going to take them a minute to get here, but we got to do what we got to do. Oh, they just put all those trebuchets and stuff right up there. This is why you do scouting. If I put the galley inside the city, it will actually... Oh, there's two galleys here. One of them's upgraded too. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get through here. Looks like we really did upset them by putting that city there. We may end up losing Frankfurt. Let's see if we can get enough cash selling some horses. It looks like Jadviga will give us 204. We're only not going to sell them to Coupe for them to use them against us. So we'll take their cash there. Uh, let's sell one of our gypsums. 207. We'll take it. I could purchase a Quadrim, which I think would be a good move. But it still doesn't give us a lot of defense. Of course, we could also get an Archer. If we wait one turn, we might be able to get a crossbow, and I think one turn's going to be too late because they're going to come in very, very quickly. Why you got to be like this, Maori? I just finished the war. So I suppose we're going to change production to Ancient Walls. They're never going to finish in time. They're going to take Frankfurt very, very quickly. I can't even afford a swordsman without two more. A swordsman would give us the most defense for that city, but the archer would allow us to fire back. So I think we're going to buy an archer. And now I want 480 for a quadrium, and I only need about 140 more gold. I think we can make that happen. Let's sell some of our pearls. Yeah, they, Jadviga only has 18. So I could sell the coupe. Let's see who wants some diplomatic favor, huh? Vilhima will give us 319 gold for it. I'd love to sell it to the Nubian Empire, but they just don't have enough gold. Neither does Jadviga, and I'm definitely not selling it to coupe. So we're going to take the 319 here. And then add a quadrim, just like that. For some reason, Coupe wants to make a deal. Maybe it's because we added so much military presence to that city. 
that they decided not to declare war, but right now they want some of our iron. We're definitely not going to give it to them. Apparently Poland also wants some of our iron. We can't do that either. I need more swordsmen. We finished up machinery, which means we could upgrade this archer to a crossbowman, which would be really nice. But once again, we need a little bit more cash. 250. We're selling our soul. Looks like we can get 223 for the diamond. We will do it and upgrade to a crossbowman. This place just became a little bit stronger. That crossbow should be able to hold out quite a bit. I'll be much happier when the walls get there. And it looks like it's going to be another four turns before the other quadrim gets there. So after that, I'll feel pretty good about the defense of Frankfurt. On the good news front, looks like we just hit land here. We had a mega colossal eruption from this volcano. I can't wait until it goes dormant, which means once again, we're going to have to repair our campus. I would have preferred the campus not being there too, but the fact is it was the best campus location for our capital. I would have preferred not to settle on the Mayais. We don't have a big choice because these are going to go down in the first flooding, and I'm not sure that we'll have the flood barriers before then. So we're going to take our chances, go right here on the corn. It goes from two gold, a production, and a food, to two gold, a production, and two food. Not shabby. And because everybody's getting spicy all around the map, we're just going to start with ancient walls. And Maori's city here, whatever it is, is preventing us from crossing in this direction. So this galley will not be in support of any sort of combat action over here. So we're going to head back the other way. See if we can sneak across this way. Horseback riding is finished. Not that we're going to use it, even though we do have some horses. Oh, look at this great campus location. Yeah, I think we're going to have to get a city over here. I don't know when we're going to be able to do it, but very, very soon. In fact, there might be one here and one over here. And then once we have this influence, we can keep going up on this side as well. It'll give us western facing power and eastern facing power, which will be very nice. It's also going to make me want to put a canal in here, and that way we can pass through. Because right now, there's no easy way unless you go all the way up and over. Future plans, no big deal. But this scout's going to continue to make their way around. Ooh, who is this? Oh, this is Nubia. We finally have a medieval era civic with the discovery of naval tradition. Look at us, just making gains. We are going to take advantage and change some policies up, though. I do like the fact that we're saving some money on some units by using conscription. But I think the 100% production bonus for defensive buildings is going to help us out with all those walls being built. And the plus two gold from grade routes is not as handy. So I think we're going to go plus two great scientist points. I'd love to get some great people. Eventually, I'd love to put in some plus 100% harbor district adjacent bonuses once we start getting our harbors down. Because I think what we're going to do is go big money and take all that big money and turn it into production and naval power. I want to keep Ilkham in, but I don't think we need 50% bonus for production of settlers. But to be honest, I don't know what other economic policy card I'd want to put in its place. So I suppose we're going to leave colonization in there as well. We did discover Hunza, and just by putting one envoy in there, we'll get plus two gold in the capital and every market and lighthouse. So we're going to do that. And they don't even have a suzerain either. Where are you, Hunza? There you are. It looks like the unmet civilization and the Dutch are fighting over them. We have a couple of quadrimes here, so I'm going to go try to see what we can scout out about this Maori city right here. They only have a military strength of 283 compared to our 386, not to mention the fact that we have another quadrim coming out. Granted, some of it is in land-based armies, which aren't too big of a deal. Oh, look what you're doing. Poland's got a trebuchet sitting here. Isn't that cute? And there's another trebuchet. Oh, now they want to do a military emergency because I've captured Radom. Look, that's old news. That was several terms ago. If only I got enough Diplo favor to downvote it twice. I'd prefer not the whole world go to war with me. And of course, the military emergency passed two to three. Let's see who joined, shall we? Coupe and Jadviga. Oh, <laughs> looks like Poland found some friends, did they? Well, I guess we're going to war. So here's the deal. First, I think this is a decent screenshot. Maybe we'll find a better one later. We have to defend Radom until the end of the emergency, which is in 29 turns. We have a minus two combat strength when fighting against Poland and Coupe. They also gain plus one movement, but we do gain plus 20 loyalty per turn in the target city. If they win, they get plus in healing and diplomatic favor. If they lose, we get combat strength and diplo favor. Oh, this is going to be rough, especially considering they already have a couple trebuchets here. Nine turns until the walls finish in Poznan. 
five turns until they finish and rat them. So I'm going to let this trebuchet move up, assuming that it's not going to try to attack the swordsman, and then we'll see on that front. And now with Coupe ripe for the taking, I think we might want to try to take a Totare. They have no walls there. I have a Quadream sitting here. Let's go find out what we can see, because I'm sure they're going to try to take some folks by sea, and then we can attack them there. I don't want to fight a war on two fronts. All right, looks like Yerevan has declared war on us. It's one of the city states someone is allied with. Where are you, Yerevan? Right up here. Hopefully they won't bother us when we try to take this city too much. And everybody needs to start creating all the things. Let's go with a few more crossbowmen out of Treyer. I am going to bring some of the archers up here because now I'm not leaving until we've taken Poland's capital. In fact, we're going to bring two up here because I don't think they're going to try to come all the way down through here to attack, especially considering they will have walls. Our capital already does. Magdeburg will have it in seven turns, and we'll grab him for Berlin next after it finishes this next quadrium. Ooh, another governor title. Ooh la la. Let's go ahead and promote Pingala and get the science in the city going. That increases our science by six. Oh, look at there. There's a free builder. Oh, uh, we don't have the ability to get out there quite yet. So I'm going to wait until they try to come around. And now we're losing loyalty in Ulm. Maybe I should have gotten a new governor so we could have put in one there. It's very, very close. It'll take 120 turns, so I'm not too, too worried about it. And even if I can get a military unit there, a garrisoned unit would help. We have 369 gold. I wonder if a galley count as being a garrisoned unit. I mean, we might as well check it out. We're building a navy anyways. Nope, it does not look like it does. So what I'll do is try to sell my soul again next turn because we're down to 109 and maybe buy a crossbowman for 720. No, that's not going to happen. Where else do we have a governor that we don't necessarily need? I don't want to move Pengdala. I don't want to move the governor out of Frankfurt. I guess we'll just wait and see. It's going to be a long time anyways. According to current pressure, it's only 120 turns until it flips. So we've got some time. All right, here's some easy attacking that we're going to do right here. Their toe is going to take a hit there and take a hit from our crossbowmen. Wonderful. And it looks like we can plunder this trade route. Thank you, Maori. That's a free 120 gold. And here's another quadrium to go support those efforts. Oh, look, there's a galley. It makes me wonder, do they have land units sitting up here? We're going to find out. I'm going to need to turn around and come support this quadrium. See, one advantage that Maori has is they can go straight from here to here over the ocean tiles. We can't quite do that. We still have three turns until apprenticeship, which I'm going to wait and keep getting because the bonus production from the Hansa is going to be great. But then we're going to circle back and get celestial navigation and then maybe into cartography, which will give us access to the caravel, which could help us turn the tide in this war. Back in Berlin, it seems like we need to produce more military. Oh no, three turns, ancient walls, easy play. This quadrim is going to go back down here to support, although I want to pop up once just to get some vision. Oh, look at this sneaky little guy. Yeah, we're going to try to pop off on here. It's only 18 damage, but every little bit counts. Now that we're at war, we can actually bring this galley through their territory, so that's what we're going to do. Oh, there's a trebuchet. Let me attack the trebuchet. All right, just as we had hoped. The trebuchet is in the open, so we are going to make a nice attack there. That is still within range, so I think we're going to hold. Of course, I could get a quick damage. Yeah, let's do some quick damage. That way it doesn't hit as hard. We can also hit it with the spearman, although this is a losing battle right here. But anything we can do to get that trebuchet down is a positive. Plus, we just earned another promotion. Beginning the next turn, Mary's galley hit real big on this quadrium. Enough to the fact that I know we couldn't stand another hit. Well, we might be able to stand one more hit because it only took us down 49. So yeah, I think we're going to just fire upon it. And then if we need to, we can get back into Berlin, hopefully surviving. I need to get this galley down here. It's going to be a few turns, but it's worth it. A Maori Quadrim is wanting to fight a crossbowman. I don't think that's going to work out very well for them. And then we're going to start peppering this city. It looks like they are building walls, though. Yeah, that stinks. Here's our Spearman's promotion. We can go with combat strength versus cavalry or plus 10 when defending against melee. Ultimately, it'd be great to get hold the line and choke points. So I think we're going to go straight into the next highest promotion. And now that they've been promoted twice, we can name them. Welcome to the army, Residi Spearman. Appreciate the support, Residi. 
Hopefully you live through the war. Loop Flarp is going to go right back into this trebuchet. I don't love the damage these trebs are doing, but this is a necessary evil. How did they produce so many trebuchets so quickly? It would only take 495 gold for us to levy Lahora's military. And right now they have three swordsmen, a catapult, a worthless galley sitting inside of a lake, and a warrior. That could be what we need to take Poland. Let me see what we can sell. What do we got to get to? 495. Nobody wants to buy our horses. Nobody wants to buy our pearls. Somebody does want to buy some iron, though. We can get 267 gold for selling 32 iron to the Dutch. I think we're going to do it. I don't love selling all that iron. But remember, at the end of this war, we may end up with another iron mine. Let's go to Lahore. We're going to levy that military. It's going to give us plus two more era score. And then we're just going to march right in. Catapults too. Absolutely. Worthless galley. Our calculation was wrong, and I have no idea why. The first time this galley hit, it only did 49 damage. I suppose it was a little bit weaker, but we just lost that quadrim to this galley, which is a little upsetting. Then we lost this quadrim to something that came out of nowhere. It must have been a range unit because we didn't return any damage. That one hurts a little bit. We still have the biggest military strength out of all known civs, so I feel pretty good about that. This galley is now trying to circle it on us. Luckily, we have a galley in support right here. It can't quite get there. We will move there. We will try another range attack. Oh, uh, and our quadrim is eligible for promotion. And then I'm going to move the crossbow up and out so we can also get some damage on these areas as well. Did not love losing all those units, but hey, what are you going to do? Looks like this Nahang will be able to take down this trebuchet. Oh, so close. We're going to bring the swordsman back into the city for some healing. And this archer is going to move up one and then take down that treb. Once we get some more gold, I will upgrade these to crossbowmen before we leave the, the territory. Because both good old Leon's archers and Beastie's archers are ready to be upgraded. Now this swordsman is going to move back into the city and heal up. And then this spearman is going to move down, try to circle it up from this way. These swordsmen, these are mercenaries, so we don't care as much about their lives. Nubia's got a settler here. Go away, Nubia, no! I can't go to war with Nubia too, right? That'd be a big no-no. Maybe we go to war and then peace out? Yeah, I think we have to. Thank you for the settler. Don't worry, I'm going to declare peace in nine turns, I promise. Hey, I didn't tell you to move that thing around all willy-nilly. I mean, while we're here, we might as well steal this as well, huh? Why can't I go in there? Oh, uh, we already moved our movement. Okay, maybe next turn we can steal that worker. All right, now we are fighting almost everybody on the map. I'm going to piece out a newbie. I'm not worried about newbie. They have a 68 military strength. The barbarians in the early game must have crushed some folks. Oh, there's lots of traders going out. So we will pillage this one. Thank you. We just finished our wonderful Hansas because of apprenticeship. A lot of action up here. First, let's go ahead and promote this quadrim so that it survives. We're going to go line of battle since we're in such a naval combat situation. That'll really help it against the galleys. Oh, what are you doing? So right now we have two galleys and a quadrim. Looks like this guy can come present a little bit as well. I want to weaken up this one. This one's already pretty weak, and I don't want to lose another galley, so I think we're going to try to weaken that one up. And this is actually sitting in an ocean tile, so I can't even move there, so I might as well attack into there. I don't love how exposed Frankfurt is, but we have two turns until the ancient walls, and then it will become impenetrable. Well, not impenetrable, but you know what I mean. Okay, I lied a little bit earlier. We're going to go into Celestial Nav first, and then into Mathematics. These are two quick researches. It's going to give us plus one to naval movement, which is really good. Then we're going to go into Military Tactics because our Spearmen will be able to be upgraded into Pikemen. That'll help. These are big 45 strength units. And then we're finally going to end up here at Cartography. This is going to be a while. And I don't like how we're going back and forth and up and down through the tech tree. You normally want to try to concentrate your science. But unfortunately, we don't have a lot of choices. We need these techs. And as you can see, we are starting to fall a little bit behind the tech tree. But that's going to be okay. We're probably only a few techs behind and we're just starting to get campuses online. Over in Berlin, I'd love to put down the Hansa. We have a nice plus two one right here. 
but a seven turn crossbowman seems good. We did finish the ancient walls, so it looks like we are going to have more time for our war. So I think we are going to go ahead and put down the Hansa. Plus two seems great to me. And that way we're going to be able to start churning things out in here with that superior production. Over in Radom, we have some production, but I know this is Trebuchet. Just got an upgrade. That's not very what you want to see. There's a plus three Hansa available here, but we don't have time for that. I want to build something to help the war efforts up here. Possibly an encampment would be good, but Radom doesn't do a lot good because of their production. So once again, I think we are going to go with a Hansa. Oh, there's a plus four right here. Ooh la la. Unfortunately, I realized the rest of the video was actually muted as I was talking. So I'm going to try to do some voiceovers and wrap up the rest of the story for this episode. So I apologize in advance if I'm going to go ahead and sound different or if it sounds a little bit of fragmented. Something we didn't realize when we took this settler was Nubia's loyalty presence was actually pretty high across the western side of the continent. So we're going to need to be careful about where we put down this city. Keeping in mind this heavy presence right here where we were planning on putting a couple cities. But hopeful if we can settle, say, down here somewhere, we might be able to build enough of a population to fight back some of that loyalty pressure. We're going to be able to upgrade this swordsman to a men-at-arms for only 150 gold. And at the time, I thought it was a good move because men-at-arms are so strong. But then I realized we still have a bunch of these archers sitting around that could have been crossbowmen. That would definitely help our strategy against these trebuchets here on the Polish front. Hindsight being 2020, I suppose. Also, thanks to some of our new tech, our battering ram is now eligible for promotion into a siege tower, which would be good considering I think Krakow has medieval walls, and the battering ram only works against ancient walls. It's time to renew our trade route, which is always a good time, and I'm thinking about sending it all the way up to our northwest front. Now we could send it to Radom for three food and one production, but Poznan only gives two food and one production. The benefit of sending it to Poznan, though, brings that road further into our front lines. At the end of the day, though, I think those two cities are close enough, plus the extra food in our capital would be very beneficial. We have found Coupe's capital thanks to this galley that is going to be trying to get from the east side to the west side of their territory. Unfortunately, it's going to be slow going, and hopefully that city won't be able to knock that galley out of the water before it makes it back to Frankfurt. Speaking of Frankfurt, we've managed to wipe out most of Coupe's forces and earn our crossbowmen a promotion. They have a couple of small navy ships left, but they're very low health, so I think we're going to be able to wrap those up fairly soon. Coupe still has a decently large military presence though, so we're going to have to keep an eye on them. But a lot of times when the AI joins these military emergencies, they don't necessarily put their entire back into it. So we'll have to keep an eye on them while we try to take advantage of the Western Front. Speaking of the Western Front, it's time to bring some of these levied units into the front. We're going to send these swordsmen and this catapult in and try to get as much damage on Krakow as we can. Although with Krakow having almost a 50 defense on its walls, I don't know if we're going to have enough meat for those potatoes. Just as I'm starting to get excited for taking out another trebuchet, I look up at Poland and see yet another trebuchet that's been produced. Where do they keep getting all these beautiful toys? We've brought the catapult up to the front and even though they are mercenaries, we will try to take care of this swordsman by moving it back a little bit and then send the fresh swordsman into the trebuchet. You keep creating more trebuchets. I'm going to keep knocking them down. Back to the eastern front in front of Frankfurt. One of the last of Maori's ships will hit it with a quadrim and then finish it off with the galley. Oh look, Poland has yet another trebuchet. No big deal. We have some promotions here that are going to be able to give our army a little bit more health. Our catapult's not as good as the trebuchets, but we're starting to be able to overpower everything that they have in the region. Although their military score is getting much higher than it used to be. To no one's surprise, all of a sudden Poland produces two more trebuchets and a horseman. We're starting to run out of steam here in front of Krakow because they keep throwing out more and more defenses. Meanwhile, we're sitting right in front of the city that is able to lob everything it needs to. 
So at this point, we may start sending our troops back a little bit and then just waiting for them to lose their military emergency. Because I'm not sure how much longer we can put up with this pressure without having the money to upgrade all of our archers into crossbowmen. And the same might be true on the Eastern Front as well because Otaratara has completed its walls and the mightiest part of our armies is sitting on the Western Front. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to get through on this side either. Despite having the largest military of the known civs right now, fighting on two fronts is never a great idea. It's never a good time when your turn starts off with that sound. But as you can see, they've now added a men at arms and another spearman. Oh yeah, they also have a knight too. Not to mention, I don't know if I've seen it before, but there's an encampment above Krakow, which could be responsible for all the extra production required to produce all these extra units. Here's another one of those turns where it's not a good sign. Luckily, most of the units that were destroyed were part of the levied military, but this is definitely where we're gonna start to consolidate our forces on our line and just pick away the remaining Poland forces. We still have 15 more turns until the end of the military emergency. So I'm gonna clean up as much of this as we can and then try to piece out both Coupe and Poland. Once we can do that, we'll be able to concentrate on our economy again and then surprise them in, I don't know, 40, 50 turns with a new and improved German Navy. After that whole settler steal, we were actually able to make peace with Nubia. We didn't get anything for it, but hey, it's one less person that we're going to war with. Next episode, I'm gonna to try to concentrate on improving the geopolitical situation surrounding Germany, also while ramping said economy. I hope you had a great time with this episode. I'm looking forward to reading what you think in the comments below. So until next time, much love, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.